The last century witnessed much progress for humanity. Poverty reduction, technological innovation, urbanization, and economic growth. These achievements came at a cost. More pressure on the resource base and an increasing risk of natural resource scarcity and environmental degradation. The changes in our ecosystems, be it on terrestrial ecosystems or in marine ecosystems, can have fundamental patterns of impact on economies as a whole, on the livelihoods of local communities, and indeed on the development potentials of countries in the future. Raw material use per capita doubled in the 20th century. In 1905, a person used on average 4.6 tonnes of resources annually. Now it is around 9 tonnes, with the trend rising. In some developed economies, the average is over 30 tonnes, and as low as 2 tonnes in some developing countries. The limits of the earth crust of easily available metals or other minerals means that we cannot go on in an exponential fashion to use ever more materials. But the desire for well-being, for a grow still growing population, is rising. So, we want to have more wealth and need to have less resource consumption. This is the decoupling agenda. Decoupling means using less resources for the same economic output, using them wisely and breaking the link between economic growth, resource use and environmental impacts. When the economy grows and resource use does not grow at the same rate, this is resource decoupling. When the economy grows and the environmental impact decreases, this is impact decoupling. The decoupling theme runs across all the work of the International Resource Panel. Many countries have made investments that led to resource and impact decoupling and have shown how it is possible within existing economic structures. The recycling sector is one example. It employs around 1.5 million people, with an estimated 15 million people in developing countries making a living from informal waste collection. Recycling's global annual turnover exceeds 160 billion US dollars and processes over 600 million tons of commodities annually. There are reductions in air pollution in both developing and developed economies. From 1970 to 2000, most OECD countries achieved absolute decoupling of economic growth from all major air pollutants. Such successes need a coordinated approach involving all stakeholders and strong leadership among policymakers. Cities are centres of innovation where transport, water, waste, energy and housing can be provided more efficiently to improve the lives of growing populations. Cities play a key role in decoupling as they consume over 75% of the world's natural resources. How they use them is critical to their future. The IRP looks for solutions and policy options to accelerate decoupling. Providing housing, food, mobility for 9 billion people with the existing economic model will simply be impossible. So, if we still want to develop in the future, it will be utmost important that we decouple our economic growth from the resource use. Currently, we are doing too little. Technologies are already existing, many of them, are already providing very good answers for less costs, for fewer risks, for better economic opportunities. Decoupling is an opportunity for innovation, efficient resource use, less waste, poverty reduction, job creation and economic development.